Jean, your new column in the uh, Washington Post is entitled Clarence Thomas's Explanations Fail the Laugh Test. This story is outrageous. In it, you write, quote, in 1969, Supreme Court Justice Abe Fortas resigned after it was learned he had accepted and then returned $20,000 from a Wall Street financier. Thomas accepted gifts from Crow worth many times that amount, even counting for inflation and failed to report them. And then there is all the money Jenny Thomas has received from right-wing organizations that lobby on issues before the court, plus her outrageous involvement in the Stop the Steal putsch that led the January 6, 2021 Capitol insurrection. Thomas doesn't believe in affirmative action or protecting voting rights, though he benefited from both. He does believe in living the good life among millionaires and billionaires whose interests he just happens to protect in his opinions. My mental image of Thomas used to be of him sitting on the Supreme Court bench during arguments, silent and scowling. Now I see him on vacation, smoking a cigar with Crow and his buddies, laughing as though he doesn't have a care in the world. The joke is on us. So let's back up a little bit. This is a donor. Yeah. Talk about who Mr. Crow is. And also, mm -hmm. why isn't there, I mean, I know that there may be an ethics investigation opened mm -hmm. into this, but this seems like perhaps something that could, I don't know, expose the, the, the justice to being completely impaired when it comes to being able to make objective decisions. Well, look, so we're talking about uh, gifts that Thomas uh, accepted from Harlan Crow, who is a Texas billionaire. He's actually the son of Trammell Crow, who was once the biggest landlord in the country. It's a big real estate empire. And so Harlan Crow, um, who has a big collection of Hitler memorabilia, but let's not get into that. Well, Harlan uh, Crow well, uh, ga gave uh, uh, Clarence Thomas and Jenny Thomas these lavish vacations, including a $500,000 trip to Indonesia one year, or would have cost $500,000 if they'd paid a dime. Uh, he trips on his private jet, on uh, cruising around island to island on a, on a super yacht, um, all expenses paid plus many other vacations. Um, yearly, they go to some resort he, he owns. Again, and his mother's house. Right, right. And, and, it, it, and it, it's incredible. And he never reported this. He never reported a, a penny of these donations. And then Harlan Crow bought his mother's house and fixed it up. Um, uh, as far as we can tell, uh, it has let her live there rent free. We're not sure of that. They haven't really commented on that. But I, th I take their no comment as a, basically as confirmation. And, and uh, again, so he expects us to take seriously his reading of the, of the tiniest nuances of the Constitution right. and give them great weight. And he can't read a simple disclosure form. He, he can't see the difference between, you know, hospitality, which may be allowed, and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in gifts, including private jet travel. It, it's just, it's absurd. It's ridiculous. Uh, and he's just, he's just laughing at us. He's, wow. it, it, you know, and there are no Real, there are really no rules and certainly no punishments uh, for ethics at the, at the Supreme Court, and it's, it, which is also outrageous. Um, so, there's not a code, really. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a code that covers judges in general, uh, and they kind of try to follow it, and they're supposed to follow it. They didn't follow it. So what? What's, what's, what can anybody do to him uh, short of, you know, impeachment and removal? That could happen, but it's not going to happen. So, um, so here we are. Again, the joke is on us. Gene, talk about that, the code and why there isn't one. What's the historical reasoning for not having some form of accountability? Because there is forms of accountability for elected yeah. officials, of course. There are mm -hmm. codes they're meant to follow. There are disclosures that they're meant to make, certainly when it comes to lavish vacations or having your mother's house renovated by somebody where there could be a potential conflict of interest. Why not the Supreme Court? And what might change because of these disclosures? I ask that realizing that not much might change, but let's ask it anyway. 
Yeah, let's ask it anyway. Uh, much should change, but I, I kind of doubt that much will change. I mean, you know, the uh, the Supreme Court has uh, the, the the view of, of Congress and the president has always been that the Supreme Court basically gets to govern itself and set its own rules, and the Supreme Court never has set uh, any any sort of really binding rules on ethics, uh, and it it refuses to do so, and I don't think it will. And um, and Chief Justice Roberts, um, he has not commented really on this. Uh, he can't love it. He can't love the scandal that the court has been dragged into by Justice Thomas. But there's very little he can do to him, really. I mean, what, what can he do? The Chief Justice is is sort of first among equals, but uh, each justice is kind of his own sovereign country, almost, at the, at the court. And uh, there's not much anybody can do. Now, you would think that the Supreme Court of the United States would care about uh, having an ethics code, would care about being perceived as being, uh, you know, cleaner than Caesar's wife. But no, they, they simply don't. And I don't think that's going to change. 